Hey, how's everyone doing today? This is Josh Noel with Premium B, and in this video, we're gonna talk about color correcting our video with the new Lumetri scopes inside of After Effects. Okay, so here we are inside of After Effects. We already have our clip in here, and we shot this in a log format on the Blackmagic Cinema camera, and we're, this is a clip that we will be color correcting using Lumetri scopes today. So what we're gonna do is, once our clip is here inside of After Effects, we're gonna drag this right on top of the film strip icon to create a new composition with the same settings, and here's our clip in this new composition. So to bring up the scopes, what we can do is click on this double arrow at the top here and click on color, or we can go up to window and go to workspace and click on color. So the first time you load up Lumetri scopes, you'll see that there's just the waveform monitor. And what we can do is click on this wrench icon at the bottom here, and we can add the vector scope, uh, the histogram, and also the parade. And here we have all four of our scopes that we'll be using to color correct this clip. And we click on the wrench again, go to the waveform type and set it to Luma from RGB. So we just see the Lumas there. So before we dive into color correcting anything, just for those of you who may have never used these scopes before, just get a quick look at how these work. So up here in the right corner, we have the waveform monitor. And basically how you can look at it is from zero to 100. And basically that's the IRE scale. And all this information in the middle is just a measurement of the brightness of the pixels in this clip. So basically you can see that uh, we have a majority of our information between 40 IRE and 80 IRE with some of these shadows peeking down here. And we can kind of take a look here is we have some of this darker information right here in the middle, which is basically probably going to be our shirt right here, which is about between 20 and 40 IRE. And also maybe the hair, which is you know some part of the darker pixels. And you see we have some bright pixels right here at the top, which is this uh, sort of blown out boats over here. So we can kind of be able to look at the waveform monitor and see how it lays out with our actual footage. So to sum it up, the waveform monitor shows you where your information's at. And at 100 IRE, your information is completely white or blown out. And at zero IRE, your information is completely black or clipped. So basically from a colorist standpoint, you want to be able to keep all your information between zero IRE and 100 IRE. Down here, we have the histogram, same sort of concept. You know, you have zero to 100 and lets you know where your information's at. And the RGB parade shows us the information of our color, so our RGB. And this is a good uh, monitor to use when you are trying to color correct multiple clips together. So you can match these two up and then you can apply your grade. Uh, but we're not gonna get too much into that in this video. And then we have the vector scope, which shows us the saturation of each of our colors. As you can see, we got red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, and magenta. Basically, you can see we have some saturated reds, which is about part of our hair right here, and probably some of these, you know, the wood and maybe these uh, sort of palm trees back here. So that's basically that information. But let's go ahead and start color correcting this and seeing how these scopes change and how we can read them and see what we're doing. So let's go ahead and go to Layer, New, Adjustment Layer. And we can rename this to uh, Color or color correction, whatever you want to name it. And let's go up to effect, color correction, lumetri color. And let's open up the basic correction tab. So we have a very flat image and the exposure looks good. So the first things that we want to do is up the contrast and add saturation into the shot. So let's go to our contrast and take note of the waveform monitor as we go ahead and increase the contrast. So we set to 150. You can see that the top of the waveform monitor went up closer to 90 IRE and, and you see a lot of information also got spread out below the 40 IRE mark as well. And you can see the image is a little bit more contrasted. We have you know darker shadows and brighter highlights. And we can see kind of like her face is a little bit overexposed. And the one thing I want to take a look at is when you're color correcting, I like to color correct for people. And we're gonna go ahead and measure her face so we can kind of see where those levels are at. So what we can do is go to the video clip, grab the pen tool, and we can select out her face real fast. And we'll see what we have. And with this selected, we can see that the information is being brought over 80 RRE to about almost 90. And a good rule of thumb when you're color correcting skin tones is that you don't really want the highlight information to go above 70 IRE. And right now we are above 80, so that's not good. So we're gonna go ahead and bring this down and work on this by a touch. So go ahead and set the mask to none. And we'll go to the exposure and we'll go ahead and set this down by a touch, maybe like negative 0.7. So that should bring it down by a touch. Let's go ahead and remeasure this and see what we have. As you can see that we have majority of our information between 70 and 50 IRE, which is uh, pretty good. And we have natural looking skin tones. So let's go ahead and set this to none for now. So let's go to the saturation. And when we adjust this, take a look at the RGB parade and the vector scope. So let's go ahead and set this up to 240. 
and you see this information really popped out. We have a lot of reds and you know a good amount of yellows. So that's looking cool. And this is a sunset shot. So maybe we can make this a little bit more yellow. Maybe go to the temperature and set this down to six. And it should make it a little bit more warm. And you see the reds are definitely a little bit stronger. So right now we're on the right track. We're in a good ballpark. But let's go ahead and go to the creative tab. And we have a few more parameters in here that we can really play with. And let's go to the vibrance and maybe set this up to like 50. And this should help, you know, pop some of the you know, smaller colors in the background here and make it look feel like more like a sunset shot. And we're going to continue to work on this. So now we have some nice contrast and we have some nice chroma in here. Let's go ahead and start manipulating the chroma and really dial, dialing in this look. So one thing I want to take another look at is if we turn this mask back on and look at our actress's face, we can see that her, you know, her skin is pretty good. You know, I mean, this is about the skin tone line here and where the information should be laying. Like if you have this information all the way pointing to greens, you're not going to have natural looking skin tones. So around this line right here is basically where you want the skin tone information to be. Uh, you definitely don't want it to be over in the magenta area or you're going to really start playing around with people's skin tones and making it look unnatural. So keep that uh, in mind when you're color correcting for skin tones. So let's go ahead and start dialing in our look and we can do this with the color wheels. However, I don't like using the same color wheel effect in the same Lumetri color effect just in case I need to undo everything or just kind of reset it and there's not really a good way to reset this. So what I suggest doing is close up this Lumetri color, go back up to effect color correction and add Lumetri color again. This way, if we make any mistakes in the color wheels, we can just reset it and start from scratch. Whereas if we reset the entire Lumetri color effect, it resets everything, everything else that we did. We don't want that. So for the shadows, let's go ahead and dial this into the blues by a touch. And let's go to the midtones, dial it to the greens. And I highly encourage you guys to not exactly copy these settings. Of course, every clip is going to be different. Uh, and I encourage you guys to develop your own style. You know, a lot of people might not like what I'm doing here. Uh, but of course, this is part of having your style and having your taste. So keep that in mind. And for the highlights, let's go ahead and move this up to the oranges by a touch. And this should help our image just out by a little bit and create a little bit more of a style. So we'll go ahead and turn this off real fast, see what we did. So it kind of cooled it down by a little bit, but also retained some of that warmer information in the highlights and help push the skin tones a little bit away from the reds by a touch. So that's what we have. And it looks really nice. I like it. Other people might not, just keep that in mind. And also one other thing before we keep moving on here, that if you're new to color correction, keep in mind that what you're color correcting on your screen is gonna look completely different from someone else who's using a different display. So if you're on an iMac like I am, this is gonna look different than someone who's watching your video on a TV. Uh, so just keep that in mind that even though it looks good on your monitor, you gotta use these scopes to make sure that everything is following the rules and you're not creating something that's gonna look horrible on another display. So let's go ahead and explore a few other effects here. Let's go to effect color correction and let's add the color balance effect. And with the color balance adjustment, this will give us a lot of control over the RGB and how it's gonna affect the shadows, midtones, and highlights. And this one, I'm just gonna go ahead and change the midtones because I wanna make this look a little bit more golden. You know, it looks kinda, of, it looks very clean right now, but I wanna make it look golden, make it look make the sunset pop out a little bit more. So let's go to the midtone red balance, set this up to eight, go to the green, set this down to negative five and go to the blue and set this down to negative five. And now we're getting that golden look. Our skin tones are starting to get a little bit out of control in my opinion, but let's go ahead and boost up the contrast even more. So let's go to effect color correction, brightness and contrast. Let's go ahead and push up the contrast by a little bit, maybe to like 35, see what happens here. And it's making it a little bit more dramatic. So let's go ahead and maybe bring down the brightness just by a little bit because it's starting to get a little bit too warm on the skin. And we'll just bring this down to like negative four. And that looks just fine. Let's go back up to effect, color correction, hue and saturation. Let's go ahead and start fixing up some of these, you know, really saturated pixels in the face here. So let's go to our hue and saturation. Let's go to our control channel. Let's go to the reds. And let's desaturate the reds just by a little bit to like negative 15-ish. And this should help pull out all those reds a little bit. And then under the magentas, let's go ahead and set this down to like negative, you know, 45. So they'll kind of help take out the purples in the image a little bit, and especially on her face. And now we're at the part of the clip where we just need to start making small adjustments. So let's backtrack a little bit and go back to our color wheels. I like to make the blues pop out a little bit more and make it just a little bit more natural in my opinion. So let's go to the shadows and just pop out the blues by a little bit more than what we already have. And let's also go to our midtones over here. And let's just kind of make this a little bit more natural by putting this more in the green a little bit. And what's going to happen is we're going to get this 
more of a neutral image here, a little bit more dramatic. I think this looks nice. Uh, however, the shirt here is a little bit too blue. We're starting to saturate just by a little too much, but the rocks look good. Uh, so let's go back into our hue and saturation. Let's go to the blues. And let's desaturate our shirt by a little bit. So as you can see, we've set it down to negative 40. And now the shirt is less saturated blue, and we're starting to get this very natural look. And we still looks like we have this nice golden hour. The skin tones look beautiful. Um, and, you know, we have perfect data here. We have nothing clipping over 100. Nothing's pure white. Nothing is pure black. And we kind of created this nice sort of film look. Uh, we have nice colors. I like colors. I think it looks nice. And then the last thing, let's go up to effect. Blur and sharpen, and let's add the unsharp mask. And this will help sharpen up the image by a little bit. I wouldn't touch it by too much. I'll leave it where it's at. And then let's go ahead and do one final look at our skin tones here. And you can see we have very close to natural looking skin tones. Uh, the We have nothing peaking over 70. So we have beautiful highlights on her skin. Uh, our colors look good. So let's go back and keep this at our final image. So this was a quick overview on how to use these scopes and how you can use these color filters to create pretty much any look that you want. However, I mean, every clip is going to depend on what you're doing. Every You're going to have different lighting situations, different exposures. So you're going to have to keep that in mind. But for the most part, you should be able to use all these tools that we used and make small adjustments. You might need to do some more basic corrections with the highlight shadows and blacks and whites. Just keep that in mind if you do that inside of After Effects. So those are my methods for color correcting video inside of After Effects. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. For more tutorials, please be sure to check out our blog at premiumbeat.com. And if you're in the need for royalty-free music, we have a huge library full of great music for your projects. And once again, thank you for watching this video. And this has been Joshua Noel from premiumbeat.com.